Welcome back. So, uh, we were discussing about the possibility of finding out uh, which particular modes uh, of a given uh, modes of vibration for a given molecule will be infrared active or Raman active and if one is infrared active uh, then in which polarization, which direction it will be uh, the transition will be taking place. So, we need to know about the selection rules right. So, basically we want to find out which one of them is infrared active and which one is Raman active or which one are Raman active. So, uh, let us start with uh, formulating uh, how we can find out about the about the possibility of one particular type of uh, you know activity that is infrared active or uh, Raman active. So, what are the selection rule associated with that? So, now we will talk about the selection rule. Selection rules of molecular vibration. So, uh, we know that uh, uh, any any normal mode uh, which uh, is expressed as uh, you know it can be expressed as uh, uh, the wave function as in as a wave function and uh, we can write this wave function as uh, uh, you know as a function of the normal coordinate so normal coordinate is the coordinate about which the uh, you know uh, the vibration takes place. So, this molecular vibration uh, uh, the wave function for this normal modes I can write as psi n uh, which I can write as n i Okay. So, you can find this in any uh, uh, you can find this in any uh, textbook of uh, quantum mechanics. So, uh, here in this expression uh, what we have uh, we have a normalization constant. So, n i's are normalization constant and this xi i is the ith normal coordinate ok. Fine. And this alpha it is a function of the frequency of the normal mode. So, alpha i I can write as uh, by this. So, now this is a wave function for any particular normal mode. So, therefore, as we have discussed earlier, this wave function should form the basis for an irreducible representation of the particular point group to which the molecule belongs to. All right. So, uh, here uh, one thing I forgot to mention, this is uh, a polynomial this is called Hermite polynomial ok. 
which is uh, is a function of this coordinate. So here I have root over alpha i xi i. Now uh, this one is such that for n equals to zero, n equals to one, two, and three, the values are different. So this uh, <coughs> n here represents the vibrational quantum number. Right. So, if it is in n equals to 0, that means we are in the ground vibrational level. And one more thing, like I express this uh, in a normal mode in terms of this equation, uh, this is valid for uh, you know uh, a particular model which is the harmonic oscillator model. So, uh, most of you are probably aware of this. So, now this harmonic polynomial, if I have n equals to 0, then I have a value of 1. So, if I have if I consider h 1 in general I have a value of 2 x. Okay. So, then h 2. So, uh, so similarly I can write for h 2 and h 3 and so on. So, this gives me a value of 4 x square minus 2 while this gives me 8 x cube minus 12 and so on. Okay. So, now uh, when I when I operate uh, uh, any symmetry operation on this uh, wave functions uh, what should I get? I should get uh, either you know plus 1 or minus 1 and uh, uh, you know multiplied by the same uh, same function back right that is what it should be because uh, this wave functions form the basis for uh, the irreducible presentation of this uh, uh, of this uh, uh, particular uh, molecule that we are considering. And if we are considering a one dimensional irreducible presentation then obviously I should have uh, you know this plus or minus one case character. Now, uh, if I consider uh, if I if I consider uh, uh, you know n equals to 0 okay. and uh, if I have you know many uh, normal mode of uh, normal uh, modes having many uh, that many number of normal coordinates then uh, you know all of them if they are at the uh, lowest most energy state that is the lowest quantum vibrational quantum number 0 then I <coughs> have the my molecule in the ground vibrational level. So, uh, I need to know what is the frequent uh, what is the symmetry uh, property of this ground vibrational level. Now, this ground vibrational level uh, what uh, you know uh, what is the form of the wave function at the ground state. So, at ground vibrational level I have h 0 which is giving 1. So, therefore, what I have is psi 0 okay, for any ith uh, normal mode. Uh, as n i e to the power minus alpha i by 2 and xi square because the other part is 1. Now, at this condition what is the symmetry of this particular function or in other word if I ask that which at you know uh, which i r of the point group this particular function which is at ground state will transform as. So, let us find out. So, here you know uh, if I operate r on psi I will get something out of this right. So, um, here for psi 0 I have a function where you know suppose this is a function of this coordinate. So, the symmetry of this function is governed by this uh, normal coordinate right. Now, uh, how do I get this normal coordinate? I get this normal coordinate 
by the you know symmetry adapted linear combination of this atomic motions okay so uh, if if this xi you know uh, transforms as one particular irreducible representation then that will be the irreducible representation that my uh, you know uh, this function will also transform as so if i apply an r on this xi so this this is a coordinate system so r will either change it to plus 1 or minus 1 okay so this will give me plus or minus xi i so in whatever case either it is plus or minus if i apply r on this function this is going to give me back always plus 1 right as my uh, you know uh, plus 1 times this function so therefore if i operate all the symmetry operation okay so if i perform all the symmetry operation the characters irrespective of the operation is always going to be plus 1 what does that mean that means this is uh, this particular function which is the ground state ground vibrational state wave function it will form the basis of totally symmetric irreducible representation so so at ground state the normal modes at ground state normal modes will form the basis for totally symmetric irreducible representation. Now here obviously I assumed something, I assume that this uh, you know uh, energy levels that I am talking about is non-degenerate okay that is only one particular uh, energy state is there uh, one particular state is there for that particular energy value now if i have a situation if i would have a situation where i have uh, more than one state having the same energy so i have a case of degenerate state so there also i can very easily show that this this particular property of the normal modes at the ground vibrational level remains intact so how can i do that suppose i have uh, here i consider that one particular uh, normal coordinate so suppose i have uh, uh, say xi a and xi b they form my set of uh, two degenerate vibrational uh, two degenerate uh, normal coordinates uh, for two normal modes of vibration uh, at the ground state then I can express this uh, uh, I can express this the transformation of xi a such that xi a will form something like say xi a prime and if these two are degenerate as I assumed then what will happen I can write this one as something like uh, say uh, R A times xi A plus R B times xi B. Now if my xi A is normalized then this coefficients R A and R B also will be you know uh, taken in such a way that this guy is normalized so if i take this psi a square is equal to 1 in a normalized condition then that will imply that psi a prime is also equal to 1 so both of them are normalized therefore i have no problem because i can express psi b in psi b also in the same way so therefore the matter again you know becomes like the same case as we discussed earlier so therefore irrespective of the fact whether this you know uh, normal mode is normal mode of vibration we are considering when it is in ground state is it degenerate or non-degenerate 
it will always form the basis for the totally symmetric irreducible representation of the particular point group that we are considering. So, this is true always. Now, what will be the case of uh, excited state, right? So, we have talked about the ground state that is if I call psi 0. Now, I am talking about excited state. So, the symmetry of the excited state will be governed by this part, right. Why? Because we have just seen that this part no matter what always will be transforming as the totally symmetric irreducible representation. So, I am not bothered about this part anymore. So, I have to take into care of this particular you know symmetry. So, as we said earlier the first excited state or the you know n equals to 1 h is h 1 is equals to 2 x when I am talking about h of x correct. So, uh, so if I am talking about psi 1 I will have its symmetry governed by this. So, here I have say uh, x okay. So, if I write in terms of this uh, uh, normal coordinate I can replace it here. So, I will have uh, you know uh, some sort of symmetry fine. So, here it will be an odd symmetry. Now, similarly I can find out about psi 2. So, psi 2 again it will have uh, contribution coming from h 2 which is. So, this is again an even function. So, the nature of the wave function at the excited state will be governed by the uh, symmetry of this normal uh, coordinate correct. So, either I will find an odd function or an even function. Now, uh, in case of uh, you know vibrational transitions, so uh, uh, what are the different kind of transition from which state to which state we can write. So, suppose I have a molecule which has a total overall uh, k number of normal modes. Okay. So, let us consider a molecule with a number of normal modes. equals to say k associated with k uh, different normal coordinates. So, I can write down the total wave function okay, of this by taking a product of each and individual wave functions. So, now uh, suppose I have uh, say psi 1 at particular energy state and let me call it as a 0. Then make a product with next one sorry uh, psi 3 so on up to psi k. Now, this 0 within the parenthesis it, uh, it gives me uh, the particular quantum number okay, where this particular wave function is residing that is a particular normal mode is residing. So, here in this particular case I am considering that all my normal modes the first, second, third or the kth one all of them are residing in their 0 level that means all of them are in ground state. So, therefore, this is this total wave function of this molecule is in ground state. Now, suppose one of this suppose the jth one okay, is uh, residing on this you know uh, n equals to 1 that is the first excited state. Then how can I write? So, this one overall I can in general write as uh, the psi as okay, and I can write this one as n. Okay. Now, 
suppose I have a situation where my psi is say psi j is residing on state 1 and rest of them that is i minus 1 is still residing on 0th vibrational level. So, this configuration is the uh, you know first excited state configuration and uh, this this means that one of the normal mode must have like what was the situation here from here one of this jth normal mode has made a transition from state n equals to 0 to n equals to 1 and this type of transition is known as fundamental transition fundamental vibrational transition there are other type of transitions suppose i would have uh, th this particular jth normal mode would have made a transition you know to st state 2 suppose it would be psi of j 2 then that would mean that it has undergone two successive transition from 0 to 1 or 0 to 2 that would give you the first overtone if it would have gone to third level it will give me second overtone also it could be that instead of only one normal mode it could be two normal modes say for example if i would write psi j and uh, psi l have gone to state 1 and the rest of the wave functions that is normal modes they are residing at level 0 still then this would be called a combination transition. So, we can have this combination transitions we can have this for, you know uh, overtone transitions all these things apart from this fundamental. Now, the matter of fact is the fundamental transition probabilities are way much higher than the overtone or on the other uh, sense we can say this overtone transition and combination transitions they are uh, much less probable compared to the fundamental. So, we will stick to the fundamental transition only all right. So, if I write down the uh, excited state wave function for a particular uh, fundamental transition as by a different symbol say I write down uh, as uh, say I will write that this is psi v uh, say i as my ground state wave function where all of the normal modes are residing on the 0th level while say psi v j is the case where one of the normal modes is residing in the first vibrational level ok. I mean uh, uh, v equals to 1 right. So, that a transition from here to here will give me the fundamental transition right. So, I am writing in this particular notation now. Now, we have to find out that how do I know about the transition probabilities. So, if I want to consider this fundamental transition I can write the transition moment integral as psi uh, v j over all space this is my transition probability. Now, uh, in this transition moment integral that I have this mu is a dipole operator. So, which can be broken in terms of you know the charge and the distances and this r associated with this can be explicitly written in terms of x, y and z. So, this we discussed uh, some time back very briefly. So, this one I can you know rewrite in three separate integrals. So, in terms of x, y and z charge 
has nothing to do with this integral. So, we do not consider about that and I can have uh, the same thing uh, say in in instead of x in another case I will have y in another case I will have z. So, I will have total 3 you know, integral which are possible. Now, I need to talk about the you know uh, the result of this integration. So, this particular uh, transition moment integral will uh, will sur survive only when the direct product of this. So, what is that? Because each of this you know functions with this function or this wave function will transform as the one of the IRs or it will form the basis for you know one of the IRs of the particular point group that we are concerned. So, if I replace this wave functions by their symmetry property meaning irreducible representation to which they form the basis for then the direct product of those irreducible representation either should be equal to the totally symmetric irreducible representation or should contain the totally symmetric irreducible representation fine. So, then only I will have non-zero value for this integral otherwise this integral will vanish. So, that is true for each one of them okay, either x or y or z integral. Now, I have just seen that this psi i which I took as my ground state fine. So, in case of psi i it forms the basis for the totally symmetric irreducible representation. So, fine that is true for any ground state vibration level. Now, we are left with this two because I do not have to worry about this one. Whatever will be the symmetry of this will be the symmetry of this integral right because this belongs to totally symmetric irreducible representation. So, now what that does, does mean that this particular wave function that is the wave function of the excited state must have the or must belong to the IR to which x uh, belongs to correct okay? because only when the irreducible representation corresponding to this wave function and this function are same the direct product is going to contain the total symmetric IR correct okay? and this direct product must yield total symmetric irreducible representation or the you know product of this must contain the you know totally symmetric uh, irreducible representation in order to have a direct product with this one which is already totally symmetric uh, in nature will give the uh, non vanishing value for the integral. So, in other word if I say what do I have it here it says and this we are talking about the infrared you know uh, transition right. So, the transition infrared transition is possible only when the excited state contains the or the irreducible representation corresponding to the uh, excited state wave function must be the irreducible representation to which either x or y or z belongs to then only I can have the transition. So, that is my selection rule right. So, uh, this one I need not worry about. So, I only need to look at the excited state uh, wave function and its corresponding irreducible representation and then find the irreducible representation to which x transform as. If these two are not the same their direct product is not going to give me the total symmetric irreducible representation. So, I will find out which of this or which of this uh, you know uh, integrals will survive and I will get the infrared activity. So, this is about the uh, infrared activity. Now, what about the Raman activity? So, in case of infrared spectroscopy I deal with this integral ok where the you know operator is nothing but the x y z Cartesian coordinate. What happens in case of Raman? I have 
a similar type of transition moment integral involving psi uh, of where this p is nothing but the polarizability. So, I will have many uh, transition moment integral possible based on that what component of the polarizability tensor we are you know talking about. So, the polarizability tensor has uh, you know component like uh, say uh, x y, x z, y z okay, or x square, y square, z square or their combinations for example, like x square minus y square, x square plus y square and all those things. So, this this individual you know functions they form the component for this polarizability tension. So, I can have the you know uh, transition moment integral for Raman transition, Raman vibrational transition uh, by taking this you know functions x y x z and so on. Now, rest of the things will follow as such. So, I need to find out. So, instead of this particular one, I can have an integration integral which looks like uh, say x y. So, the case becomes same again. This I am not worried about because this already you know belongs to totally symmetric irreducible representation. Now, this normal mode which is the excited uh, you know uh, state wave function and this particular function x y they must form the basis of the same irreducible representation and then only this transition moment integral will survive. So, thereby all I have to do I have to look at the character table uh, and particularly the uh, area 4 of the character table where you find this particular functions okay and that will tell you exactly that okay this x y this function it forms a basis of this particular irreducible presentation or x z forms that particular irreducible presentation so you exactly know what is the you know uh, irreducible presentation you know according to which this wave function will transform okay so once you know that you look for that you know uh, irreducible representation to which the operator that is x y or x z will transform and then if they are not same you got your answer it is not this direct product is not going to contain the totally symmetric i r therefore, this you know uh, this particular integral will vanish. If it contains the totally symmetric i r the integral will survive. So, there will be a definite probability of transition and one thing here like for uh, this kind of transition you will be able to say that if this x integral survives then not only the transition is allowed because if I am talking about the uh, you know uh, allowedness of infrared transition then I will see either one of them that is x integral or y integral or z integral survives or more than one survives it can you know happen that it, it survives in each case or it can happen that it survives only in one case that is in case of x or y. So, if it survives in one particular integral then I call this transition is allowed and allowed in that particular direction. Say for example, this is allowed along x direction then I say this transition is allowed and this is polarized in x direction or it is x polarized. Similarly, if I have both x and y uh, having uh, both x and y integrals having non-zero value then I will say the transition is allowed and the transition is polarized in x y plane. Okay. In the same way I can talk about uh, for Raman uh, transitions also. So, after knowing this I am ready to now go back and talk about the uh, uh, like we, we figured uh, we found out certain set of uh, uh, irreducible representation which uh, represents the normal mode genuine normal vibrational modes for n 2 f t molecule right in the previous class. So, out of those uh, normal modes uh, which are Raman active which are in a, you know uh, infrared active that we can now state 
clearly so we will do that in the following class and uh, till then uh, have a good day thank you very much